go to Mr. Brock, correct? Or Mr. Motz? Mr. Motz. Four minutes. Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you, Minister, for being here. Um, you know, you had just finished talking about uh, the duty that you have, and, and I think I would, <clears throat> I would be remiss not to remind that, that we all have a duty, including yourself, sir, to be fully transparent and accountable to the Canadian public. And that's one of the reasons why we're having this review, as well as the inquiry, I, I would suggest. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's important that Canadians can trust that when we ask for information, that information can be made available. I know it's easy to hide behind cabinet confidence, but that doesn't give Canadian public confidence, and it really doesn't. They have to have reason to trust this government, and they have to have reason to trust this committee that we have had full access to the information that the government relied upon to make those decisions. And it's fair um, that, we, that we do, and I, I would ask that uh, you undertake to provide um, the analysis and the information that, that uh, you were made aware of that you relied upon to, um, uh, to you know, to, to be part of making the invocation for this particular uh, um, Emergencies Act, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Motz. I understand the sentiment behind the question, and I, I certainly share the, the goal of transparency. I think Canadians will understand that cabinet confidence is a critical part of our cabinet governance system. The ability for, for members around the cabinet table uh, to be able to express their opinions freely, particularly when they disagree, particularly when they have to leave that room and all give a common uh, answer, which they may not have disagreed with, which they may not have agreed with privately. That's a critical part of our system. And so the waiving of cabinet confidence is extremely rare. We have, and the same is true for solicitor client privilege, we have given a, a detailed map in the documents that we have tabled. We have tabled our consultation report. We have tabled the reasons for which we've, we uh, invoked the Act and we feel we've met the Act. So we've effectively given the, the, the fair, conclusions fair uh, of the discussions. Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate the, the position you've taken. I think we have to also um, recognize the supremacy of Parliament, and, and that, that was something that I'm sure will be come, uh, come forward in the future. But based on your testimony tonight, sir, I, I think it appears as if uh, on, a, on a comment you made, I believe, to Senator Boniface that you know, you went straight to the Emergencies Act, contrary to Section 3 of the Emergencies Act that, you know, requires the situation that cannot be properly handled, effectively handled, under any other law uh, in Canada. And I would suggest that, you know, there is many sections in the Criminal Code, too numerous to mention in my limited time, and certainly, uh, uh, you know, provincial statutes and municipal bylaws could even have been employed, and they either did not, they were not fully... Um, uh, or, or properly utilized in this situation, and that's, you know, what, what may have prompted you to do that. And I want to get to a question that Mr. Green asked about the Charter. Now, many Canadians believe that uh, the order in council by this particular, uh, in this particular situation, raised serious concerns with respect to Charter rights. Uh, Section 2 guarantees freedom of association and assembly. Section 7, uh, the right to liberty and freedom and security of the person. Section 8 guarantees protection against unreasonable search and seizure. And um, I guess my question to you is, and again, it was mentioned before, that judges have ruled previously on the limitation of our fundamental freedoms must be demonstrably justified, reasonably proportionate, and prescribed by law. Now, did you conduct a full charter review, sir, um, and compliance review in all aspects of this particular um, act? And if so, who do you consult with? And are you able to share uh, those findings oh, thank with, you the, with the committee? In five seconds. With your premise that we went straight to the Emergencies Act. Uh, we did not. We did not invoke it before we felt it was absolutely necessary. With respect M to the Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you, Minister. Unfortunately.